Hey there, it's March the 19th and we're continuing our journey through the good news of Luke and we're at the end of Luke chapter 3 and we're reading from verses 22 through to 38. This is the genealogy of Jesus but we're referred at the beginning by Luke to the fact that Jesus was 30 years of age when his ministry began and this was a significant age uh, in, in terms of the fact that priests were not allowed to serve in the temple until they were 30. So Jesus has served this tutelage, he served his apprenticeship, he's been working under his foster father Joseph, and now he is released through his baptism by John into his full ministry, into, as it were, the full high priesthood that he's been given by God. The genealogy that Luke gives us is different from that in Matthew. Many scholars argue about how this is defined, whether this is actually Mary's genealogy because Joseph isn't really his true father, or whether this is Jesus' legal genealogy. Uh, many different arguments are put forward. What we can say is that from David down to Joseph, there's not a match between the two accounts, and we don't understand why that is. But Luke, again, is the one who's being careful and he's looked over things so obviously Luke has his reasons for giving that but what Luke does which is interesting is he gives the genealogy from beyond Abraham which Matthew doesn't. Matthew after all is a Jew who is interested in showing that Jesus is a full Jew himself descended from Abraham but there's something in Luke that tracing back to Adam who he says is of God that somehow Jesus is linked to Adam and therefore that Jesus is uh, not just the fact that he's a full human being, but there's also something in him of representing Adam uh, as he comes down and being the new Adam, the one who is going to restore humanity to the place that it had with God at the beginning, which is why he traces the genealogy back to the beginning. One thing we can also say about the genealogy, it was important for a Jew to be able to tell where he came from, to be able to tell his pedigree. We can find that from books like Ezra, where the Jews needed to be able to prove that they were full, fully descended in their lineage. And so this is, gives Jesus even more um, credibility in a sense as Israel's Messiah because he's not only a human being but he's fully Jewish he's the son of Abraham in that sense we can be convinced then that Jesus is someone who is fully uh, acknowledged as being part of Israel he's also our human representative before God. He's the one who has taken Adam, as it were, the Adamic nature, the Adamic being, into the very presence of God, into the Godhead itself, where he intercedes for us today. This is an exciting fact in who Jesus is, both man and God. Have a very good March the 19th.